Welcome back to our session on Chapter 4, Woodcraft Furnitures, and we're just going to pick up by completing the debtors ledger, one of the debtors ledger accounts. We've already done the journals as well as the general ledger, and I'm just going to briefly explain to you how we post from our journals to our debtors ledgers. I'm going to do one debtors ledger account with you, and that account is the account of S. Briet. Remember, in your general ledger, you you've already kept track of the total transactions for all the debtors, increasing debtors control on the debit side and decreasing it on the credit side. So the same rule will apply. We're just now going to look at individual debtors. In our question, they started off on the 1st of April with a total for debtors control of 20,068 and the individual debtors adding up to 20,068 as well. So we can start the account of S. Briot with the 8,750 Rand, 8,750 Rand on the debit side. And that will be our balance. 1st of April. In practice, you will then go to all the journals on a daily basis as soon as you put the transaction in the journal you will also put the same information in the debtors ledger so that we can determine at the end of every month which data is responsible for which amount due to the entity so if we can have a look at the only transaction for S. Briet in the normal journals. In the debtors journal, we had a transaction with Espriot on the 24th. We sold to him goods to the value of 1,200 Rand, and there's our corresponding cost of sales account. Now remember, if you buy something from Truers and they put it onto your account, you are never aware of the cost price of the items. You only know about the selling price, so we only use selling prices in the debtors ledger never account for the cost price in the debtors ledger. So on the 24th, we're going to include this 1,200 Rand on the debit side of S. Briet. This we get from the debtors journal, and the corresponding credit for that transaction remains sales, just like with um, the debtors control corresponding other credit. We also had a transaction with S. Briet on the 29th, and that was in the general journal, S. Briet, where we charged him with interest in the general journal, debit in his account. Can you see why we had to include his detailed description there in the general journal entry? So now we know where to take it in the data's ledger, and we're going to include the 50 rand on the debit side, and now it's interest income, general journal on the 29th. So at the end of the month, you will just balance all of these debtors accounts. It won't necessarily only have entries on the debit side, like you can see for Shinet. Shinet owed us an amount on the debit side, and we received a payment in the cash receipts journal, resulting in no balance for Shinet. So at the end of the month, you will balance all of these accounts of the individual debtors, and in the end, you would want the total of your debtors ledger to again agree with the total of your debtors control account. You will follow the same process for creditors, not only have their transactions in in the journals, but also in the individual accounts for the creditors. You've now done all the postings from the journals to the general and the debtors and creditors ledger, and the next clip will deal with brief discussion on how to draw up a trial balance.
Welcome to the last session on Chapter 4 for Woodcraft Furnitures. We dealt with the required parts up until this point, and now we're going to have a look at the trial balance that we have to draw up as at 30 April 20.6. If you can refer to the diagram in your workbook on the accounting process, this question followed step by step from transactions that was given in the question, all the way through the journals, the postings to the ledgers, both the general debtors and creditors ledgers. And now we're finally at the point where we can draw up a trial balance in preparation for the compilation of the financial statements. A trial balance is a list of accounts from a certain ledger. Now, in our trial balance, we want to make sure that we've adhered to the accrual concept. Therefore, we're going to have a column for debits and a column for credits. Now, we just need to determine which ledger are we going to use to draw up the trial balance. You'll see that it's again a heading as at a specific point in time because it's balances and we're trying to test the duty concept with all our debit totals and balances versus all the credit totals and balances. The only ledger that deals with totals will be the general ledger. So I'm just going to compile a list of all my general ledger accounts to determine whether I ha adhere to the duty concept. This list of accounts can be separated into two sections. I'm going to include all the statement of financial position accounts under this first section. We've already dealt with this in chapter one, chapter one and two. And then we're going to have a section for our nominal accounts. Now the nominal accounts, that will be for all the income and expense accounts as included in the statement of profit and loss. So you will see that we're basically splitting all our accounts into the two statements that we're going to draw up. to simplify the process when we draw up financial statements. We've already discussed that we're going to use the general ledger for this. So if I can just refer you back to the general ledger that we dealt with in a previous question clip. The first account there is our capital account, and you will see that we had a balance on the credit side of 124,034. So I'm going to include this capital account under the correct heading, which is the statement of financial position. So I will just include capital, and on the credit side, I'm going to include my 124,034. The same for the next item, drawings. On the debit side, the owner withdrew inventory. So that 1,600 Rand will have to be included in my statement of financial position as well. Drawings of 1,600 Rand. And you will continue with this process until you've listed all the general ledger accounts with their corresponding debit or credit total or balance. So in my trial balance for Woodcraft Furnitures, I included all the assets and liabilities as well as the capital and the drawings under the statement of financial position section. Then under the nominal accounts you will see all my sales, all my income items, including sales, all my other expenses. And just remember that you will not include a total for the debits and a total for the credits in here. It can only be one amount. It's the net effect after you've drawn up the general ledger account and calculated the total or the balance. If the duty concept was applied accurately, the total of your debit column will be equal to the total of your credit column. 
in a later chapter we will deal with errors that can occur, but that is not part of the scope for this question clip.